church first was developing its theology when it was kind of safe to actually publicly debate among one another in all the various cities around the Mediterranean. So after three, say around 300, an image came forth of the Trinity that was given to us by the, the great uh, theologian Gregory Nanzianzen. And he portrayed, or he thought of the image of this Trinity of God, three persons, one, as a dance. It's a wonderful image of God, and it's something that's kind of neat to ponder as a metaphor as our own relationship with God. A number of years ago, country western singer Garth Brooks made his way into American mainstream uh, mindset or knowledge when he wrote a song that he called The Dance. And it's a song where the narrator is reflecting back on his love of his life and the dance that they had one night years before. He's reflecting on this in the face of the loss of this love. Either, we don't know, death maybe, perhaps a divorce. Whatever it was, there's a tremendous loss that he feels. And the song goes like this. Looking back on the memory of the dance we shared neath the stars above. For a moment, all the world was right. How could I have known that you'd ever say goodbye? And now I'm glad I didn't know the way it all would end, the way it all would go. Our lives are better left to chance. I could have missed the pain, but I'd have had to miss the dance. Life's journey, with all its ups and downs, is pretty difficult. But it's made easier, it's made more hopeful, indeed more romantic, when we believe in a God who loves us and who invites himself into our lives to be part of our life's dance. Mary is the focus of this Sunday. We're getting ready for the birth of her son, after all. And on this last Sunday of Advent before Christmas, we're given the beautiful gospel of Mary's encounter with an angelic messenger. Mary's faith, her ability to say yes to God's invitation to dance with God, holds the promise of trust. Mary will sing a song that will be given to all human beings to reflect on. It's a song that, like Garth Brooks's song, reflects on the history of God's relationship to Israel, all its ups and downs. But it's also a song that doesn't just look back on the memories of a dance, but Mary's Magnificat looks ahead to the fulfillment of God's promise. God's mercy is for those who revere him in every generation, she sings. Mary's song of praise is similar to Psalm 89 that we just sang, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. And thank you so much for that, Joe O'Connor. That way that you played that, the way you interpreted that, I always thought we have to be more joyful. So thank you for that. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord of the Lord. In taking on human flesh, God fulfills the prophecy of Nathan, who spoke to King David about God establishing David's house as an eternal kingdom. Just as God has always been there for Israel, he will always be here for us. Mary's youth, her virginity, holds the promise of hope. Prior to the Annunciation, Mary was a person who embodied hope. 
And in conceiving God's child, she literally and faithfully carries hope incarnate. Mary lived in a time and place that had women put to death by stoning for any who were found to be pregnant by someone other than the husband or the betrothed. We look to her, to the one who is able in the midst of a deeply troubling message from an angelic being to say yes to her own death. Talk about hope. It doesn't make any sense, but her yes to death is a yes to the way of God, a way she cannot possibly know what the outcome will be. But she trusts that God will lead her in a way she will not regret, and so she accepts God's outstretched hand and enters the dance of life with God. We are still striving in our own day right now, almost a year, trying to be joyful, trying to be hopeful amid the pandemic. Like Mary, we too are invited to accept God's hand, leading us into life's dance. The grace, the grace of God surrounds us continuously. It's the air we breathe. Today in our second reading, we heard the closing of St. Paul's most complicated, theologically complicated and powerful letter, the ending of his letter to the Romans. And in one very long sentence, Paul tells his church back then, and he tells his church, his parish here today, that God can strengthen us through Christ. God can strengthen us. God offers to do so, but we have to accept his offer, his offer of grace, as Mary did. Today, as we gather here at Liturgy at the table, as you come forward and accept Christ's invitation to receive his body inside your body and allow God's grace to nurture your soul, ponder this great mystery of entering God's dance of life. Between now and Christmas, I ask you to try to take a little bit of time, as Mary did, to reflect on this great mystery. In the coming Christmas season, we will celebrate our belief that in this dance of life, God will actually allow humanity to lead him in the dance for a while, God will in turn trust Mary to be his mother, to nurture him, and along with Joseph, to protect him and to provide for his needs. But isn't that what the glorified Christ does in the Eucharist with us? He places himself into our hands. Jesus trusts us to embody him in a way that helps others in the dance of life. It's an awesome mystery to ponder. As the angel said, however, nothing will be impossible for God. <laughs>